Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third annual Columbia University Arab Graduation Ceremony. Hosted by Tura, the Arab Student Association, and the Columbia University Arab Alumni Association. I am so honored to be welcoming you to this space as we host our first ever in-person ceremony for Arab graduation. <laughs> for those of you who do not know me, my name is Haya Ghandour and I am one of the senior advisors for Turat and a member of the wonderful class of 2022 from the School of Engineering and Applied Science. So in the four years of me being involved with Turat, um, and an active member of the Arab community here at Columbia, I've seen a lot of change. When I first came in in 2018, um, the students that welcomed me were still struggling with getting over the Trump election and the repercussions that had on their time here at Columbia. How much of an Arab student body can you actually engage with and how much could you actually identify with publicly? There were a lot of issues at the time in terms of representation, resources for Arab students, and things that persist to this day in terms of access, as well as identification of the body itself. In the four years, we've experienced a lot of hardship and turmoil, um, and I think you will hear a lot of this in all of the other graduations about COVID and the pandemic, and you're so resilient and so and strong, and you're able to get through all of it. Um, but I'm here to say that I just applaud the fact that you were able to extend yourself enough grace to make it through to this point. It was a hard time for us all. For a lot of us, it was coupled with many different regional conflicts, a lot of family issues, a lot of us faced deaths in the family because of the pandemic, or even health issues or having to isolate and not being social. We're a pretty social community, I would say. Um, I know I, my, my mom can attest <laughs> to how social we are, and I think at the end of it, I personally, the reflection I have were kind of the little thing, departing words I would like to offer you guys is that you need to keep carrying this community with you wherever you go. And you need to carry the hardship, you need to carry the joy, you need to enjoy being Arab while you can and challenge yourself to think about who are we to define what that means for everybody else and how can we really just accept people and meet them where they are and help them grow as well. And in the four years of working with Turat, I've seen people come from all different walks of life, we, be it Arab Americans that grew up here their whole life, or people who, like me, were coming straight from um, a country from the Middle East, like I'm Lebanese, if you don't know, Palestinian also, um, and coming here to make a new life for yourself and kind of learn something new. Um, the thing that helped me get through it is learning what community actually means and what it actually looks like with the help of other Arab students here. Uh, because they were my family away from home, be it the people that were seniors my freshman year, or people who are freshmen in my senior year. Um, everybody showed me so much love and kindness um, and care and really allowed me to grow into myself um, and learn from everybody around me. So I hope that for you that is the same and that you keep carrying this community with you and everything that it is able to teach us wherever life takes you afterwards. 
Thank you. Thank you. And now I have the honor of introducing our faculty speaker, Professor Taufiq Benamur. One second, sorry. Dr. Benamud is the senior grade junior senior lecturer um, of Arabic uh, in the MISAS department. He is one of the kind of uh, one of the most influential people in the Arab community here. Um, his work spans anything from language to music. He's a music producer, a composer, um, and has worked a lot with Arab students across many years. Um, he is the director of the Arab Music Ensemble, which I, will, along with many of our fellow graduates here today, uh, were a part of, and it's a very fun time, and I'm very honored to be in community with Professor Ben Amur throughout the time, our time here at Columbia. Um, his works focus on grammar, both in Fushaba as well as dialect. He is Tunisian, and a lot of his work uh, centers around music and the intersectionality that music has with language as well. Um, he will be our faculty uh, speaker for today, and he will be giving the address in Arabic. Um, and with that, I will come to the stage. Uh, Professor Thank you. Ayatuha al-mutakharrijat, ayuha al-mutakharrijun, الطالبات والطلاب الزميلات والزملاء الأمهات والأباء والأقارب والأصدقاء يشرفني أن أكون بينكم اليوم وشكري الجزيل مرة أخرى يعني لحياة ورانية يعني لدعوة مرة أخرى للحديث إليكم يعني بالعربي فشكرا على الاستضافة هل غادر الشعراء من مترددمي أم هل عرفت الدار بعد توهمي يا دار عبلة بالجواء تكلمي وعيني صباحا دار عبلة واسلمي مطلع معلقة عن طرة بن شداد الذي يتساءل فيه وهو الشاعر الفحل إن كان من سبقه من الشعراء قد ترك له بعض ما يمكن قوله فما الذي يمكن أن يقوله المرء في هذه اللحظة الفارقة هذه اللحظة الفارقة من حياتكم وأقول فارقة والجذر كما تعرفون في العربية يحمل معاني عديدة أقول فارقة لأنها تحمل, تحمل في جذرها الفرق والفرقة والفراق والتفرق والمفارقة إنها فعلة فعلا لحظة فراق حلوة مرة حلوة بما تحمله من فخر بما قد أنجز وحماس لما سينجز بتأمل في الماضي وتطلع لما سيأتي حلوة لأنها لحظة نجاح لحظة تتويج لسهر الليالي وتعب الأيام وامتحان النفس وصبرها وجلدها وعزمها وطول نفسها لكنها مرة أيضا مرة لأنها لحظة فراق فراق المعهود والأصدقاء والأساتذة وربما المدينة والبلد لحظة نهاية وبداية في آن واحد بداية ونهاية خاتمة ومقدمة في آن واحد إذا هي لحظة سعادة وحزن لحظة فرح وترح هذه اللحظة تقصر والحياة تقوس ترسخ هذه المحطات في ذاكراتنا ولا أقول ذاكرتنا ومن نكون من دون ذاكرة 
فما الذي ستذكرونه من هذه الرحلة التي قمتم بها في هذه الجامعة في هذه الجامعة؟ قد تنسون بعض التفاصيل قد تنسون العديد منها قد تنسون اسما من اسم علم من الاعلام او عنوان كتاب او تاريخ حدث معين او طريقه حل مشكل رياضي او مراحل تجربه كيميائيه قد تنسون كل هذا غير انكم ستتذكرون نوعا اخر من المعرفه اعمق واهم فهو مجموعة مبادئ أخلاقية تظل معكم طوال حياتكم كحب العمل وضرورة السؤال والتساؤل وحب المعرفة والنزاهة في الفكر والعمل واحترام أراء الآخرين والكرم العلمي وتبجيل من علمكم والاعتراف بجميل أهلكم ومعنى الصداقة أقصد معنى الصداقة ووجوب المشاركة الفعالة في الحياة لا تصدق من يقول إن ما تعلمتموه في الجامعة حبيس صفحات الكتب وجدران قاعات الدراسة لا يمط بصلة للواقع وأن تجاربكم بعد الجامعة ستعلمكم معنى الحياة الحقيقي ليست المعرفة لا ذا ولا ذاك فهي كليهما وأكثر فلا معنى للفكر دون تجربة ولا للتجربة دون فكر سيقول البعض هؤلاء الأحياء الأموات المتشائمون ستخرجون من شرنقة الجامعة من فقاعة آمنة إلى الحياة الحقيقية إلى واقع طاغ لا رحمة فيه قانونه الوحيد البقاء للأقوى يعني للأكثر فسادا أمالكم أضغاث أحلام ستدرها رياح السلطة والمصلحة والأنانية قولوا لهم الجامعة ليست بالفقاعة الآمنة كما تصورون وتتصورون فهي مرآة للعالم الذي توجد فيه فيها السلطة وفيها الهيمنة وفيها التمييز وفيها الكذب مؤسسة ككل المؤسسات ترتب المعرفة وتسن قوانينها المتناقضة تناقض أي نظام تفتح أفاقا وتوسد أخرى تحرر كما تستعبد سيقول سيقولون لا خيار لكم سوى أن تكونوا عمليين واقعيين وظيفة محترمة تكسبكم مالا بيت أسرة أولاد حياة مواطنة صالحة سيقولون كل ذلك سيقولون لن تغيروا شيئا باختياركم هذا هذا سبيلكم فاختاروه هو سبيلكم فاختاروا والاختيار اختياركم أليس أليست الحرية اختيارا سيقولون لن تغيروا شيئا باختياركم هذا وإن فعلتم فقطرة في بحر طام قولوا لهم أليس البحر من قطرات إذا لم تواجهوا أنتم تحدياتنا الراهنة فمن من يفعل؟ إذا لم تواجهوها أنتم بحماسكم وهمتكم ونشاطكم فمن ذا الذي يفعل؟ أرضنا بيتنا الوحيد عليل مريض يختنق ويحترق ويندثر بفعل أنانية أرباب المال والسلطة والضعفاء يستبد بهم ويستبد بهم الطغاة تشردهم الحروب ينهشهم المرض والأطفال يموتون جوعا المرأة تعاني من التمييز والاضطهاد في القرن ال... يعني ماذا أقول الأقليات تقهر بسبب دينها أو عرقها أو لونها أو لغتها أهذا هو الواقع الذي يجب أن ننصاع إليه تغيرت الجامعة منذ التحقت بها في أول التسعينات إلى الأسوأ والأحسن دعوني من الحديث عن الأسوأ فكلكم تعلمونه سأركز على الأحسن ازداد عدد الطلاب وخاصة الطالبات العرب 
كنت بعيد وصولي إلى كولومبيا ساذجا أو جاهلا لأبعاد وجودي كعربي وأستاذ عربية في مؤسسة أمريكية تقع في مدينة نيويورك بالذات كنت قد فرقت ما تيسر عن الاستشراق والاستعمار طبعا فأنا نتيجته غير أني لم أكن أعي تمام الوعي بالجانب السياسي لمهنتي وللصور النمطية التي ستصبح سجني وما يشوهه الآخرون ويستبسطونه عني عن هويتي لم أرى نفسي لا في الكتب العقيمة التي كانت تقرأ ولا في المقالات التي كانت تنشر ولا في الأفلام التي تعرض كنت أضحك وأغضب من صوري من صور التي لم تكن صوري ولكني أدركت بسرعة أن لا جدوى من الضحك أو الغضب رفضت أن أحبس في زاوية أضطر فيها أن أرد الفعل فقط قررت أن أبني حتى أهدي قررت أيضا أن التعصب لهويتي ولغتي وأصلي قد يؤدي بي إلى أن أصبح مثل الذين يميزون دوني لست قوميا بالمعنى العقيم تخلصت من القومية والحمد لله قومية برجيب لست قوميا بالمعنى العقيم للكلمة كما أني لست من الذين يصحون في الصباح متسائلين أن كانوا عربا أنا لا أسأل هذا السؤال عربي والعربية لغتي أعيش فيها وبها ومعها تسكنني وأسكنها لم أحرم منها كما حرم منها المرحوم إدوارد سعيد انظروا مقالته حياتي في العربية My life in Arabic ولا أدري أستعمل في أم بي في ترجمة فقد شردته وأسرته إسرائيل ثم ألحقته العائلة بمدرسة بريطانية في مصر نفي مرتين مرة عن بلده وأخرى عن لغته شاءت الأقدار أن أولد في مكان آخر وفي زمن غير زمني رأيت بعد وقت وجيز الكلمات العربية تسبة رهائن حرب ضروس على الإرهاب كما يزعمون كلمات أصبحت سجينة حروف لاتينية دون أن تترجم إلى الإنجليزية أبدا جهاد شريعة حجاب إلى آخره كلمات مفاهيم ما زالت تنتظر أن يفك أسرها ما زالت تنتظر من يفك أسرها أنتم نعم أنتم الإيديولوجيا عدو المعرفة اللدود وأنتم من سيفرق بين الغث والسمين بين الحقيقة والكذب بين العدل والظلم بين الكرامة والذل نعم أنتم تنتمون إلى الأنسانية وتحدياتها كما تنتمون إلى العروبة وقضاياها فالنخلة شجرة كالزيتونة والتينة تشاركهم البستان وتنهل جذورها المتداخلة نفس الماء وتتغذى من نفس التراب ولكنها أيضا نخلة مسك الختام أبيات أسردها عليكم للإمام الشافع الغزاوي المولد اليمني المنشأ المصري الضار سافر تجد عوضا عمن تفارقه وانصر فإن لذيذ العيش في النصر وبالنصر يعني العمل الجاد والجهد ها؟ إني رأيت وقوف الماء يفسده إن ساح طاب وإن لم يجري لم يطب والأسد لولا فراق الأرض ما افترس والسهم لولا فراق القوس لم يصب والتبر التبر هو الذهب عندما يكون يعني من يعني مسحوق والتبر كالترب ملقا في أماكنه والعود ولا يقصد بالعود آلة العود هنا بل العود الذي يستخرج منه العطر الآن الذي يباع بالألاف صح؟ والتبر كالترب ملقا في أماكنه والعود في أرضه نوع من الحطب سيح في الأرض كالماء الطيب ألف مبروك
thank you, Dr. Ben Omar, um, for those moving words. It's through your work and the other faculty and how you advocate and inspire our students that we are able to foster, maintain, and celebrate connections with the Arab identity in nuanced and insightful ways. You create space for Arab students to critically engage in their culture, language, and history and make Colombia a more welcoming space for Arab students. I'm now going to pass it on to Ines and Maisara Zahran, um, which are this year's presidents and vice presidents of Turaf. Um, and they're going to be presenting this Turaf Senior Award to the class of 2022. Um, based on community nominations, a few graduates were selected to highlight some of their remarkable achievements. Mademoiselle and everyone, we are very honored to be presenting these awards today on behalf of Tura. The awards are Artistic Achievement, Commitment to Community, Inclusion and Advocacy, and Outstanding Leadership. We ask that the recipients of these awards to come up to the podium to receive their awards once they're announced. The first awards we'll be presenting today is the Artistic Achievement Award, for which there are two recipients. This award recognizes the artistry and creativity of graduating seniors. This may be in recognition of their work in, but is not limited to, digital arts, graphic arts, literature, music, and the performing arts. The first recipient of this award is a senior whose creativity speaks loud and clear upon entering a space. From their understanding of graphic design, fashion conventions, and having a musical thumb as demonstrated by their involvement with the Arab Music Ensemble, led by Dr. Tukul this graduate's talent and love for the arts is inescapable. This computer scientist is known beyond her academics at the engineering school with her contribution to the Columbia Spectator as one of their in-house designers. Most notably, notably, as one of Tura's dedicated media coordinators, it is evident that she has left her mark on both the Arab and the general Columbia community in very tangible ways. Her commitment to the role for two consecutive years has encouraged her to create the designs for two years' worth of Turat merchandise, worn by the entire community. She has offered her artistic touch when planning the layout and design for all of our events. She is the force be be behind Turat's social media, including the majority of the graphic designs on our posters and advertisements on Instagram, Facebook, and the newsletter. Her attention to detail and her skill with graphic design has allowed Torah's effort to reach the entire community. It is a delight to present Amina Asel with the Artistic <laughs> Achievement Award. is a graduate who has shown incredible artistic talent through her role as a media coordinator for Turas in the past. Um, she's helped design some of our greatest visuals, including the now famous Arab Valentine's Day poster, which I encourage you all to go check out. Um, and she has left a permanent mark on Turas' visual and graphic identity. Moreover, she has shown her engagement with the Arab community through her constant advocacy for important causes and her involvement with Turaf, as well as the Students for Justice in Palestine. I'm therefore very proud to be presenting the second Artistic Achievement Award to Sara Wali. so happy to award um, and the commitment to community award is given to graduating seniors 
who have worked to strengthen the Arab community at Columbia by demonstrating dedication to relationship building, programming, and advocating for Arab students. This person should be someone dedicated to bringing people together for the purpose of unity, organizing, as well as fellowship. And you guys will be presenting the first chord for this. The first recipient of this award is known for their, for their dedication to the Arab community beginning in their freshman year. From their openness to supporting any and all students interested in computer science, to the three year long involvement with Torah, first as an organizing committee member, then as vice president, and this year as um, senior advisor, this graduate is a face familiar to the majority of the Arab student population on campus. This is in addition to working with the MENA branch of the Columbia Mentoring Initiative for four years, with three of them being as a selfless mentor. She has worked as an academic mentor at Barnard and also used her skills as secretary of the Muslim Students Association in, the junior, in her junior year. Her contribution to the cohesion of the Arab music ensemble is the icing on the cake, <laughs> cherry on the top. The recipient, of the, yes, the recipient of the Commitment to Community Award for this year is without any surprise, <laughs> Rania al <-Shafi. laughs> okay. Um, okay, hailing from Jordan in their freshman year at Columbia, the second recipient of this award is known to have acclimated seamlessly to the difficult life of New York City um, and the greater Columbia community as an international student. Their consistent efforts to involve themselves in the Arab community as a general member of Turaf and ultimately as an event coordinator on the executive board, this graduate has played an important hand in creating a space for Arab students across campus. Their role as a dedicated mentor with the Columbia Mentoring Initiative MENA branch is what initially introduced her to the Arab community. And this allowed her to graduate from Columbia with unbreakable bonds with many friends. Her innovative and inventive ideas for events while expertly bringing them to life this year is telling of her dedication to our beloved community. And her excitement to participate is beaming. Across campus, she's credited with being the, she's credited with being the glue between Arabs and Dura throughout her four years here welcoming each and every individual to our events, and sometimes even bringing them herself. Her interest in writing and economics has opened many doors for her, including her past publication, writing about Syrian refugees in Jordan, which is her native. We are pleased to present the Commitment to Community Award to Rend al Harashi. of this award with a very special individual who has left an impact on our community in more ways than one. As an Arab American with a passion for teaching, their supportive nature speaks for itself. This graduate has played an integral role in supporting Arab women on campus through her leadership role in offering the MENA Women's Group and representing the Arab community with pride as a confident and selfless student teacher during her time at Columbia. She has successfully advocated for the Arab voice in her role as the 2019-2020 representative for inclusion initiatives on Barnard Student Government Association. Her involvement on this committee did nothing short of supporting the underrepresented voice on campus, including the women on Arab ones. Not far from her hometown of Connecticut, smoothly transplanting to New York has allowed her efforts to impact many. Her confronting nature towards everyone she meets has been a support to us all as a figment of an older sibling, and she has most certainly been a force to be reckoned with across, with across the board. We are honored to present Grace and Fishawi.
to move on to the Inclusion, Inclusion and Advocacy Award, for which there are four recipients. This award recognizes graduates who have worked to cultivate inclusivity within the Arab student community, advance social justice initiatives on campus, and or advocate for the Arab community as well as other diverse groups at Columbia. And this is all to improve access to resources and support on campus. The first recipient of this award is a graduate of the School of International and Public Affairs who has been an outstanding advocate for Arab students across Columbia's many campuses, but most notably their own. They are not only fosters of an inclusive community as a student organizer, but are also known for their contribution as a leader of the group. As a student of international and public affairs, her contributions are said to never fall short of speaking up for the voiceless and being a unifying and mobilizing force amongst her Arab peers. Their efforts include their leadership in organizing events through the MENA Forum, the role they played in, in encouraging advocacy around campus by co-organizing co Paltrek, in addition to their notable efforts in organizing local events for Lebanon's past election. She has served as a president of the MENA Forum for two years, during which she organized student social and cultural events, including the Shisha and Politics in 2019, which, which aimed to engage Arab and non-Arab SIPA students to learn about and to discuss politics in the MENA region. Most recently, she organized a cultural event for Columbia students to attend the concert of the Syrian musician El Faraj that was said to be a fan favorite. It is our pleasure to present Serena Tohme with the Inclusion and Advocacy Award. <laughs> Award is an individual endeared by many and endearing to us all. This graduate will have an everlasting impact on the Arab community through, through their involvement across all other avenues, with the very specific goal of creating an inclusive and warm environment for every Arab student. This graduate has very intentionally created many spaces for Arab students to be involved on campus, with the intention of allowing each student to express all of their identities in all forms. As co-chair of the Columbia Mentoring Initiative, Mina Tree, her work speaks for itself. This graduate has also been involved with Torah as past president and as the current senior advisor. Their involvement specifically as an international engagement intern with the Global Recruitment Committee, as well as an orientation leader with the International Students Orientation Program for the past four years is indicative of her efforts to be inclusive of everyone. As an international student herself from Lebanon, and Palestine, she has managed to pave the way for her peers in the midst of a difficult transition. She has successfully helped organize for Columbia University's apartheid diverse group and Students for Justice in Palestine, fostering a safe space for all contributors to the Palestinian cause. As deputy columns editor with the Columbia Spectator and a student consultant with the Center for Teaching and Learning, she has ensured that not only her own voice is heard, but everyone else's. She is credited with many achievements during her time here at Columbia which gives us the honor to present Haya Randor with the inclusion. for Palestinian liberation both on and off campus, organizing hundreds of mutual aid fundraisers for families in Palestine, working with Social Justice in Palestine and Columbia University Apartheid Divest, and centering allyship and community building in all her work. Um, so you can applaud. <laughs> Our final award, the Outstanding Leadership Award, recognizes graduates who have exemplified rem remarkable leadership 
throughout their time at Columbia that has had a significant and positive impact on the Arab community and the Columbia University community at large. So I will let you myself. This awards recipient is a senior who has dedicated their entire college career to improving campus life not only for Arab students, but the Columbia community at large. They have a strong connection to their identities and have always had incredibly valuable insights to provide to students of all ages regarding the Arab experience on campus, and most notably the Palestinian one. A student leader from their first year at Columbia, this graduate has worked tirelessly in her role as president of Students for Justice in Palestine, um, as well as Columbia University Apartheid Divest, um, encompassing, which is encompassing of SJP, excuse me, to educate and advocate for the Palestinian cause, hereby creating a space, safe space for Palestinian students and their allies. With her unwavering support for Turaf, as well as her work in disseminating real-time political education, she has gone above and beyond to actively fulfill her leadership role, while being both at the forefront as well as on the back burner when working selflessly and collectively amongst her peers. She has taken a particular interest in communal care and abolition being at the center of her work, effectively building allyship and solidarity across organizations and identities via means of respectful communication and collaboration. And her involvement with Barnard's Center for Accessibility Resources and Disability Services as an educational aid is just the tip of the iceberg. She has been instrumental in shaping the experience of her fellow classmates with wholesome support and guidance a fierce Palestinian activist, supporter of justice, and an inspiration to be around. It's an honor to present the Outstanding Leadership Award to none other than Iftihan Men. Excited to welcome to the podium our first student speaker, Noor Dabusi, a Lebanese graduate of the School of International and Public Affairs, where she has just completed her Master's in International Affairs with a concentration in International Security Policy with a specialization in Middle East Studies. Noor has been an active member of the Arab community during her time at Columbia and will be delivering the speech in Arabic. Please join me in welcoming Noor Dabusi. المفروض بالفسحة اتشكر استاذ توفيق على كل شيء قدمت لنا انا كان لي شرف اني اتعلم اكثر على هويتنا العربية عبر الانصام واني اتشكر هيا وراني على هيدي الفرصة اللي ما حقق فيها بحياتي. اوكي نعود للفسحة. <تصفيق> السيدات والسادة الحضور، اهالينا الاعزاء عبر الفيديو، <تصفيق> الاساتذة والدكاترة الكرام، الزملاء والزميلات الخريجين والخريجات. إنه لشرف لي أن أقف هنا اليوم لأرحب بكم في حفل تخرجنا حفل تخرج الطلاب العرب من جامعة كولومبيا لنحتفل سويا بإنجازاتنا التي حققناها في هذه المؤسسة العريقة وإنه لشرف وفخر مضاف أن أتوجه إليكم بلغتنا الأم لغة الضاد اللغة العربية زميلاتي وزملائي إن اليوم انتظرناه على مدى أشهر وسنين نهلنا خلالها العلم والمعرفة معرفة والثقافة عبر هذا الصرح القيم جامعة كولومبيا التي نفتخر أن نشق طريقنا منها بعد مشوار طويل فهذه المؤسسة التي لطالما شدتنا وجذبتنا إليها أنتجت روادا وقادة ومفكرين وفقهاء على مدى سنين في جميع الاختصاصات وها هي اليوم تضمنا إلى شعلتها المضيئة في جميع أنحاء العالم لننشر مهاراتنا وقدراتنا ونساهم بالتطور العلمي وتقدم البشرية وهذا كله بفضل نخبة من الأساتذة 
ذوي الاختصاص العالي الذين دفعونا لعشق الأصالة والفكر ولنرتفع ونرفع هذا الكون معا فشكرا لكم على جهودكم وعلى حرصكم على نجاحاتنا وتفوقنا أيها الزملاء مع تفاوت المدة التي أمضيناها معا في هذا الحرم الجامعي جمعتنا اللغة سريعا رغم تنوع مصدرها ولكناتها وألفاظها وكانت حين تتنامى إلى سماعنا لفظة عربية تشدنا لقائلها وتقربنا من بعضنا البعض بصرف النظر عن المرات التي كنا نحور وندور بها على التسمية الصحيحة للفلافل أو الطعمية أو المتبل أو البابا غنوج فسرعان ما خلقنا لأنفسنا دائرة دعم في الجامعة كانت ركيزتها جذورنا العربية وقيم حضارتنا العريضة لمساندة بعضنا البعض أكاديميا ومعنويا ولو كان ذلك عبر تروقاتنا للمناقيش أو سهرات ليلة فأخص بالذكر شعوري بالفرحة والاعتزاز عندما أتيحت لي الفرصة لتعليم اللغة العربية هنا عند ملاحظتي لاندفاع الطلاب غير العرب لتعلم لغتنا التي تحتل المرتبة الخامسة عالميا ولاهتمامهم الخالص بالتعرف على تقاليد ثقافتنا فعلينا أن نتشبث بهذه اللغة شديد التشبث لأنها جزء أساسي من هويتنا العربية ولأنها مثل ما جمعتنا في كولومبيا جمعتنا في الموطن العربي وسوف تربطنا بكثير من الدول والشعوب والحضارات في المستقبل بالإضافة إلى تمكيننا في حياتنا المهنية إلى أهالينا الأحباء أنتم من عرفتم طموحاتنا وأحلا طموحاتنا وأحلامنا ومرادنا ومحبتنا للعلوم فنجاحاتنا اليوم نتاج توجيهاتكم وتشجيعكم الدائم لنا نشكركم خالص الشكر ونوجه لكم أعظم الاحترام والتقدير وشكر الخاص للوالدين الذين آمنا بأحلامي وحرصا على أن أكمل طريق دراستي في الختام كوني لبنانية لا أستطيع إلا وأن أستشهد بجبران خليل جبران الذي لامست عبقريته مدينة نيويورك وأن أذكر قوله بعنوان بمثل اسمي نور حيث قال ليس بوسع أحد أن يبلغ الفجر دون مرور بالظلام وها نحن اليوم بعد دروس أرهقتنا وأشهدتنا نلتقي بفجر النجاح أتمنى لكم جميعا طريقا معبدا بالتفوق ومشرقا بإنجازاتكم تنورون من خلاله الكون بشعلة علمكم المذكاة بعروضكم ألف مبروك all these beautiful sentiments. Our next, next speaker delivering this English address is Peter Gado. Peter is an Egyptian-Mexican graduate of Columbia College with a major in linguistics and a minor in religion and the most fun person to be around. <laughs> Peter served on the Torah board for several years, putting in time, energy, and care into creating a more inclusive community on campus. The floor is yours, Potros. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to put a group of some of my dearest companions through the spectacle that would be me grinding through Pusha, trying to do all the Arab and the Tanween on the spot. 
<laughs> I think we've collectively gone through too much over the la as a class for me to extend our torment even by five minutes more. So let's try again. <laughs> My dearest friends, colleagues, family, Arabs. Better this way, no? <laughs> Welcome to Arab Club. At this juncture, I have the chance to focus on one of two aspects of this event. The more natural choice might be to focus on how proud I am of our strength and resilience as students going through university in times as precedented or not as others. I might focus on the rigor of this institution's demands of us, offer us a chance to applaud ourselves for four or six or two years of our lives given up at education's bloody altar, to offer some words to make the sleepless nights at Butler or Mud worth the shadows that now semi-permanently sleep under our eyes. On the brighter side, I might highlight a few of our community members' achievements during our shared time on these hallowed grounds, or offer best wishes to those of our brothers and sisters who boldly carry our torch and name into futures whose stars already rise. And while all of this is true, I find this would be the easy way out. See, at an Arab grad, it might be too obvious to focus on the grad, but we take for granted the first part. What is an Arab? Put another way, what have any of us earned to build this space and share it together here today? And I promise I didn't like go together with the people who were talking before, <laughs> but it's no like Arabs first appeared on, in the historical record rising from the sands of the Syrian desert. But I promise you, if you put me in the same room as Queen Zenobia of Palmyra, our conversation wouldn't progress much past the awkward nod of acknowledgement <laughs> that my lukewarm congratulations at her successful rebellion against the Roman Empire. Even more realistically though, my ghetto, Allah Yechamo and I, have little materially in common. His formative years spent against the juggernaut of Nasser's Egypt, mine and the great state of Missouri. <laughs> we might define Arabs as simply those who speak Arabic, but what am I doing here then? <laughs> I wrote an entire thesis on how my siblings in diaspora lie in our resumes. So if my future employer asks me about my proficient, or even God forbid fluent Egyptian Arabic, <laughs> good luck, Charlie. <laughs> Before you old country folks laugh a bit too hard though, put a Moroccan, a Lebanese, and an Iraqi in the same room and just watch what happens. <laughs> and on top of that, I know everybody in this room has at least English in their pockets, but our linguistic repertoire is expensive, with both languages from without, French, Spanish, Turkish, Persian, but even those we like to forget the most, those from within, Urifi, Nubian, Coptic. And yet, none of these discrepancies make one of us more or less Arab than any other. We can talk about food, we can talk about music, we can talk about dance, we can even talk about religion. And yet the answer will still be the same. Ultimately, it seems there is no tangible or intangible piece of cultural heritage that unites every person in this room. It seems our Arabness then, our, our, Arab then, our Aruba, is fake. It, despair not, Muhammad Asad. What does it mean that, having realized this absurdity, we continue to choose to be Arab every day? Well, I can't speak for those of us who grew up in the Arab, Arab world, for those of us in diaspora, it's a daily commitment to not settle for assimilation, despite the damage this urge has done for us. In the post-9-11 world, it's the vow to always embody the underdog in the face of every piece of state propaganda telling us not to, writing our stories and even our own identities for us. We must remember, of course, the pitfalls this kind of thinking leads us to. It's too easy to think that our solidarity is, pe is with people who speak the same language, because we know that's not really true, who look the same or who worship God in the same way as us. But let us remember our forefathers, whose solidarity against the forces of imperialism did not stop at the Jordan River, but stood with the people of Vietnam and Nicaragua as well. Remember our grandmothers, who toiled alongside their sisters in Afghanistan and Ghana in the fight for their rights. More than any conquest or tower or shopping center, this is the real Aizat al -Ara. And more importantly, more than any song, more than any dish, more than any beautiful collection of words as we've heard abounding today in our languages, this is the Turah that I choose every day to embody and that I can only dream every day to deserve. Thank you. Peter for that wonderful speech. Um, now we have the most exciting part of the ceremony, 
Um, and it's my absolute pleasure to invite Diana Mujahid Woo! to the podium and Nadine, Nadine Mansour, the president and vice president of the Columbia Arab Alumni Association, to present the Arabic diplomas to the class of 
Yasmin Ihab Alkush. welcome you and induct you into our association. We are so excited to have 56 incredible new members representing all the schools and disciplines across Columbia University. What brings us together today is our Arab identity. I'm from a small town in Massachusetts, but ever since my, my mother is Lebanese, ever since my first visit to Lebanon, Every single cell in my body fell deeply, deeply in love with this land. Lebanon was my window into the beautiful um, Arab identity um, and Arab world that is um, our collective, that represents our collective heritage. Um, one summer trip to Lebanon, I got caught in the 2006 war and it was the most horrifying experience. My parents left the Middle East and they worked really hard to move to a small town so that I would never have to experience what they lived through in their life. But here I was at 12 years old, caught in a war zone. I came back to Boston after that summer, going through a very treacherous escape route out of Lebanon to get home in time for school. And to be honest, that was the most maturing experience that I could have possibly been through at 12 years old. I felt really guilty when I came back because I was one of the lucky people who could leave and go back to my comfortable home um, outside of Boston. And what it instilled in me is a really deep obligation to do the best that I could in my life to take advantage of the opportunities that were afforded to me. So I worked really, really hard for my whole life and I came to graduate school at Columbia for my PhD in biomedical engineering. 
and I spent my whole life working really hard. I, I worked really hard always thinking of Lebanon, but I realized in the fourth year of my PhD that I had gone through my whole life with like no Arab friends. Um, so I looked up Columbia University Arabs, and it was near the beginning of the semester, so I found there was an organization called Turad, and they were having like a welcome and we should get together. And I, I went, I got really excited. I didn't realize I was gonna be the oldest person by like five years, but it's wonderful. <laughs> and I met two of my really good friends um, that day, one of them, Randall Harakshir, who's graduating today. And that- I love you! <laughs> And that was the beginning of becoming a part of the community and starting my involvement. And then I found out about the Columbia Arab Alumni Association, um, who, which was started by our very own Mariam Hassan. <laughs> We're um, so glad we can have her here today um, as an honorary guest. And without her work, none of um, the association that I'm now a part of would have been possible. Um, as president of the Columbia Arab Alumni Association, my role is one of service to our community and from Columbia University and beyond. This week, you're graduating with degrees from one of the best universities in the world. There are millions of people who would do anything to be in your shoes and have a chance to take advantage of the opportunities that you have ahead of you. So I ask you from the bottom of my heart to work really, really hard to hustle and to open doors for yourselves to reach the highest positions and levels of influence possible. Because you're not just opening these doors for yourselves, you're opening them for your entire community. Once you get through, others can get through and you can help them up. So we all have a responsibility to the Arab world to um, make a difference in every small and large way. Um, we can't wait to see you grow into successful alumni of this great university, um, and you have the Alumni Association to support you in all of your um, endeavors. We can't wait to highlight your future accomplishments in our alumni spotlight, to host panels and events with you as our speakers, and continue to see you make the most of yourselves as the new generation of Arab alumni of Columbia University. And through taking part in, this, uh, in the Alumni Association, I really hope you'll be able to cultivate your network. We really hope to offer you a community to meet your future mentors, partners, clients, and friends, and to gain access to resources to cultivate your career development. And in return, we hope you'll always do the same for your junior peers. So thank you very much. And um, Alf Mabruk. <laughs> and now we're gonna try to take a group photo. Um, so maybe, uh, well, the way we'll organize it is the, if you think you're shorter, kind of get in the front. If you're really tall, get in the back. I'll see you, I'll see you on the screen. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, for my brother's graduation to this. Just come in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like this. Okay, can we get who wants to volunteer to be kneeling in the front? But turn it the other way, turn it the my eyes are contracted for I'm going to I don't know how we're going to do it. Okay. 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 Okay
guys, okay, we're gonna actually move it that way. So you see those doors? We're gonna start lining up in front of them. So we're gonna start lining up in front of them. Boys, let's go. 